So at the moment, playback is uh, playing back from the beginning to the end of the uh, sample. But obviously our agenda is to um, to work with, with grain. So we're only going to be working with fragments of that sound. So how do we do that? Well, I'm going to use a waveform object to, to, to choose a place within that sample that I want to actually, um, uh, you know, uh, which I want to play back. So that's going to allow me to define my grain. So this is the waveform object. Um, and I need to tell it a few things in order to get it to behave in the way that I want to. So first of all, I need to tell it which sample to refer to. So I'm going to do that in the waveform inspector. Uh, so if I go down to buffer tilde object name and choose my sample, then that obviously um, reads into there. I think it's actually, well, it's longer than it appears to be from that. It actually goes for the full uh, five seconds, as far as I know anyway. Um, so that's that's a good start. Uh, another thing we want to be able to do is to choose a fragment of that. Uh, so I'm going to go down to click mode down here um, and I'm going to choose the select option. So that allows me to define a region within that uh, waveform. Um, if I wanted to, I could choose other ones to allow me to change that region. Uh, but for the moment, I, all I want is select. So I think that's all I need to do for, for that waveform object. Um, and I'm going to use that to, so if I lock the patch and uh, choose a region, there's my region and I can choose a different one. Um, and again, if you've seen any of my previous tutorials, you'll know that if we add number boxes to, in fact, I could have, I should really have, have added float number boxes, but these will do for now. Um, if I choose a, uh, a fragment, then it will give me the start and end points in milliseconds. So 860 versus uh, the end is uh, 1330 milliseconds. Uh, and in fact, I am going to change those to float message boxes because uh, the output is more precise than that, as you see. OK, so what do we do with that uh, data? Um, well, I can use that to define start and end points of a loop uh, in the groove um, object. Uh, so all I need to do is to uh, connect the start point of that uh, fragment that I've selected to this loop min input on the groove tilde object and then the uh, the end of that fragment to the uh, to the end loop uh, or the loop max point and that will define the uh, limits of my loop so that's fine um, the problem is that we don't actually want a loop um, if I if I wanted a loop then I could uh, send the groove tilde object a set loop uh, one or loop I think loop and then space one message and that will turn looping on. But in fact, I don't want that. I want this to define a fragment that starts when I uh, at the beginning of the loop point and then just stops at the end. It's not going to loop back to the beginning. Um, so a couple of, uh, a couple of, well, I basically need to define those start and end points. Uh, so the start I can do simply by changing this zero message to a start loop message. Um, and that tells Groove to start playing back at the point of the, the loop. Um, so if I define a point, then we hear that it starts at the point that I specify. However, it doesn't stop at the end I specify, so it doesn't stop at the end of that fragment. Um, so we need to find a way of doing that. Um, and the way to do that is to establish whereabouts within that loop we are. And it so happens that Groove will tell us. So this right hand outlet uh, gives us something called the loop sync output. Um, and that counts uh, from zero to one over the course of that loop. So it will start at zero when you start the loop and it will count. Um, and when it reaches the end of the loop, it will be at one. Um, so if we put a, a number tilde object here, which is a number box that will read signal data, you can see that it's one already because we're sort of beyond the end of that loop point. And if I press this, you'll see it count to one. You, it does it very quickly because this number box is sampling those samples as they're read through. 
Um, if I made the thing longer, then it would be a little bit more obvious. There you go. It's counting from 0 to 1 over the course of that. Again, it's not, not telling it to stop yet, so I need to add some uh, paraphernalia in order to make it do that. So first of all, um, I add this object. So this measures or um, it, it, uh, it asks the question, uh, are we at number one? Or uh, does, does a number that's coming out of here equal uh, the number one? So that's the first thing we do. Uh, and the output will be zero if it hasn't reached number one and, um, and one when it has. So it's a truth statement. Uh, if it's not true, it's zero. And as soon as it is true, it uh, gives us a number one. So we're going to use that to establish, you know, when, when it's number one, we want something to tell us to stop. Um, so I will put in this edge tilde object and that edge tilde object basically does exactly that. It measures when the zero information changes to a one. So I put that in and once it's done that it will send a bang out of the left hand outlet when it's established that that has changed to a one. So it should do that. There you go. So once it reaches the end of that fragment it, uh, it sends a bang out of that outlet. And we can use that uh, to send a message to the groove object to stop. Um, and so that message is stop. So I'll send that to there and then back to the beginning or back to the groove object. And it does exactly what we want to. So I can choose a tiny fragment and it only plays from the beginning of the loop to the end point of the loop. So that's doing exactly what we want it to. Success. Uh, now, if I play that loop, you'll hear, particularly because I've got it right at the beginning of the sound, it's very obvious that there is a click at the beginning and the end of the fragment. And in granulation, usually that's something you want to avoid. Um, so what we could do with doing is to envelope that fragment so that it doesn't click at the beginning and the end. Um, and for that, again, we're going to measure the um, uh, how far we are through the loop and use that to drive. So we're going to use this uh, loop sync output and we're going to use that to drive uh, what's called a trapezoid object. So I'm going to lock that trapezoid. And what this does is to add a, a trapezoid shape that um, ramps up uh, from 0 to 1 at the beginning of uh, our time frame um, over a specified period and then at the end of it it's going to ramp down to 0. So it's going to give us a, um, a simple window. And the time period that we, we put in will be um, uh, 0 0.1 at which point it will have reached the number 1 and then at 0 0.9 it will start ramping down to 0. So again we're using this measure of 0 to 1 over the course of that loop in order to read through this trapezoid shape reaching um, full amplitude at 0 0.1 or 10% through that period and at 90% through it will start ramping down to 0 again. Uh, so uh, we can then use this in turn to drive a multiplication object, which of course is going to handle our amplitude. Um, so we can do this and then move those cables to there. And as I say, use the trapezoid object to drive that. So hopefully now, we no longer have the click at the beginning of the end, unless you can hear the click of my mouse, of course. Um, we have a, a, a gentler envelope over the course of that sample. So our grain is now enveloped. We will come back to explore a way of um, creating user-defined envelopes in a, in a fairly um, simple way using the function object in due course. But for now, this will do. Um, and I'm just tidying up because it's... Uh, makes it easier to see what's going on.